Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello viewers, welcome to this lecture on the MOOCs course on Mathematical Portfolio Theory. In the last lecture, we had talked about probability space both discrete and continuous. We had defined the properties of a probability measure and we had talked about random variables and some of its properties. In today's class, we will look at the two moments, the first two moments in case of random variables, namely the mean and variance and then we will talk about covariances and correlation coefficients. These two moments are of great importance in case of portfolio theory because the entire uh, structure of the modern portfolio theory hinges on the mean which will be then related to the expected return and the standard deviation or variance which will be related to the risk in market conditions. So, we start this lecture number 2 by first talking about expectation in discrete time. So, first we talk about uh, expectation and uh, we will talk in the context of uh, finite probability space. And we will first begin naturally with the definition. So, what expectation are you talking about? We are talking about the expectation of a random variable. So, let x be a random variable as already defined over a finite probability space omega p. Remember the omega was the sample space and p was the probability measure. With omega, now since this is a finite probability space, so I take my omega to be comprised of some elementary events omega 1, omega 2 all the way to some omega n. Then the expectation or sometimes we call it uh, mean or even expected value uh, of the random variable uh, that is the random variable x uh, is defined as E of x with a subscript p to indicate the probability measure and this will be given by the summation of x of omega i that is the value the random variable takes for omega i into probability of omega i and summing this over i equal to 1 to n. Now, uh, if the random variable x, it takes a certain number of distinct values. So, suppose it takes the distinct values and I will uh, enumerate them as x1, x2 all the way to xm. In that case, we have the expectation a e of x subscript p to be summation of x i into probability that x takes the value x i and in this case I will run i is equal to 1 to m. 
Okay, so let us now introduce a certain uh, notation. So uh, we, we say that, so let us denote the set of all random variables on the sample space omega with the notation Rv of omega. Now this is followed by a theorem and we will see you know why you introduce this notation Rv of omega. So the expectation function right. Uh, so, we will basically now talk about uh, the expectation function E uh, from Rv omega to R is a linear uh, functional. So, I uh, will explain what I mean by linear functional. Uh, so, uh, I will say that more explicitly Uh, if you have any two random variables, so for any two random variables uh, which are you know customarily we choose them to be x and y and uh, for any real numbers uh, which will customarily choose as uh, small a and small b we have the following result that E of A x plus B y, this is going to be A into E of x plus B into E of y. Okay, now let us uh, uh, look at a proof of this, a simple proof of this. Uh, so accordingly, we have to start off with uh, the random variable x and the values it takes. Uh, so, let us suppose that the random variable x takes the values say x1, x2 all the way to say x m subscript 1 and the random variable y similarly it takes the values uh, say y1, y2 all the way to ym2. Then the random variable, so we are interested in the random variable ax plus by what does it look like? So, the random variable, I remember that any linear combination of random variables is also a random variable. So, this random variable A x plus B y, this will uh, take the values uh, of what form? It is going to take the values of the form A x i plus B y j with i equal to 1, 2 all the way to m1 and uh, j is equal to uh, obviously I will go all the way to m2. So, i equal to j equal to 1, 2 all the way to m2. Okay, uh, so, what we are going to do now is we will next consider the events. So, now uh, we will consider the events. And the events are what? The events are uh, that x equal to x i and y is equal to y j. We will consider this event and uh, we will introduce a notation for it. So, we denote it by say e i j. So, basically all combinations of this uh, x i and uh, y j, all these such events, uh, we will uh, identify them by e of i j. Uh, see here, uh, as before, I will be equal to 1, 2 all the way to m1 and uh, j is going to be equal to 1, 2 all the way to m2. 
Now, uh, these events as you can see, so the corresponding these events uh, form a partition of omega. So, this is you know, very crucial uh, with the property. So, consequent to this uh, being a partition of omega, it satisfies the property that A x plus B y has a constant value A x i plus B y j on E i j. Uh, so, accordingly, uh, so what we need to prove is basically we will need to prove uh, this result that E of A x plus B y equal to A E x plus B y. So, accordingly E of x, we start with the left hand side. So, E of A x plus B y, uh, this is going to be by definition, this is going to be what is the random variable here? So, this is going to be A x i plus B y j, this is the values it takes uh, along with the corresponding probability that probability x equal to x i and y is equal to y j. Uh, so, this is remember that this uh, x being equal to x i and y being equal to y j for i equal to 1 to m 1 and j is equal to 1 to m 2, uh, these are uh, actually disjoint and they basically form a partition. So, I have just made use of the definition of uh, what is the expectation in terms of the values that the random variable take in order to get this expression. So, the summation now uh, this will go from i is equal to 1 to m 1 and j is equal to 1 to m 2. Okay, uh, so, now I am going to split this up into its components. So, uh, let me look at the first uh, one involving uh, the, the constant a. So, this is going to be a into summation uh, x i i is equal to uh, 1 to m 1 and within bracket I will have summation j is equal to 1 to uh, m 2 probability of x equal to x i and y is equal to y j. Okay, so, basically I have this term a x i which have been accommodated here along with the uh, probability. Uh, plus the second term that is going to be plus b into summation j is equal to 1 to m 2, uh, this time this is going to be y j and uh, within the um, summation form i equal to 1 to m 1, uh, I again have probability that x equal to x i and y is equal to y j. Uh, so, here I am basically uh, uh, considering the x i terms. Uh, and here I am considering the y j terms. So, the summation here goes from i is equal to 1 to m 1 and j is equal to 1 to m 2 here and here it is the other way around j is equal to 1 to m 2 and i is equal to 1 to m 1. Uh, so, now interestingly observe that since j it runs from j equal to 1 to m 1. So, so, basically this probability will add up to 1 and here it runs from i equal to 1 to m 1. So, this is going to just add up to 1. Uh, so, accordingly uh, what we have the next line is that I will have A. So, from here I will have A into summation x i, i is equal to 1 to m into probability of x equal to x i. Note that here the summation only runs uh, over uh, j is equal to 1 to m 2. So, I am only left with probability of x equal to x i. Uh, in a similar manner, I will have uh, the next term B summation j is equal to 1 to m 2, uh, this is m 1 into y j and here the summation runs from i equal to 1 to m 1. So, this adds up to 1 and uh, so, I am only left with probability of y is equal to y j. So, this is probability of y is equal to y j. So, now observe carefully this term here this is nothing but by definition the expectation of x. So, we obtained A of E x and this term by definition is the expectation of y. So, I have B of expectation of y. Uh, so, this completes the uh, proof for the linearity of expectation. 
All right. So next, uh, what we do is uh, we'll just make an observation. Uh, so note that. So let f from R to R be a real valued. So uh, this is R. So if this be a real valued function uh, of a real variable. Remember, this is from R to R. And uh, let x be a random variable. Uh, so then I can uh, now make the observation. Then uh, f of x, uh, which will be from omega to r, since uh, x is from omega to r, so uh, f of x will be from omega to r, is also a random variable. So accordingly, uh, once I have, so earlier I was talking about the random variable x or, or y and I talked about the expectation of the random variable x and that of y and now that I have defined what uh, this, uh, that if x is a random variable and f is from r to r, then f of x is also a random variable. So the natural uh, thing to do now is to define what is going to be the expectation of this newly defined random variable namely f of x. So this brings us to the next uh, theorem or you can treat it as a definition if you want. So then the expected value of this newly uh, noted uh, random variable f of x is equal to so this is going to be expectation of f of x uh, subscript p as before. This is going to be uh, we take f of x omega i into p of omega i and we run this summation from i is equal to 1 to n and as before if it takes the values x1 through xm then this is simply going to be f of x i into probability that x equal to x i and uh, this time x equal to x i and this time uh, i will go from 1 to m. Remember that we had taken the random variable x to take the values from 1 through uh, x 1 through x m. Okay, uh, so now what you want to do is that we have talked about uh, the addition of random variables and function. So this brings me to the next definition. Uh, or which is the expectation of the product of random variables. So let x and y be random variables. Then the expected value of x, y, this is defined to be, uh, so for x, y, the random variable takes the value naturally x, i, y, j. Uh, with the probability that probability x equal to x i and y equal to y j where uh, i runs from 1 to m 1 as before and j runs from 1 to m 2. So uh, the immediate consequence of this definition uh, is the theorem pertaining to independent x and y. So if x and y are independent random variables on a probability space omega p, then uh, the expected value of x y is going to be expected value of x into expected value of y. Uh, so once we have uh, the definition of expectation in terms of a variable and as well as its linear, linear combination and we have talked about uh, the expectation of the product of two random variables and uh, what happens in case of uh, both the random variables being independent of each other. 
so naturally uh, the next thing that we need to look at is the uh, variance. So accordingly we start uh, the concept of uh, variance and uh, standard deviation. Uh, so, the first thing we will look at is, uh, we will look at the definition. So, again is the va variance is for the random variable. So, let x be a random variable and since we have already defined expectation, so we will put the condition that it is this has a finite expectation. defined by say mu. Then the variance of the random variable x is defined as uh, sigma x square is equal to variance of x is equal to expected value of x minus mu square. Uh, so, actually let us go back, uh, let us define this by mu subscript x so that uh, there is no ambiguity. Uh, so, uh, I will just define this as mu subscript x. Uh, just to identify that this is the finite mean of the random variable x. Uh, so, once we have the definition of variance, uh, so further the standard deviation, so the immediate fallout of it is the definition of standard deviation. So, the standard deviation of the random variable x is defined as uh, sigma x uh, is equal to SD of x, so SD is for standard deviation and this is going to be square root of uh, variance of x. Okay, uh, so now that we have uh, defined what is, uh, now that we have defined what is expectation and variance, so, so the next thing that we will do is that and we have looked at a couple of properties of the expectation. Uh, so, the next thing that we will look at is the certain properties of uh, variance. So, accordingly we start off with uh, this notion of properties of uh, variance. Uh, so, formally let us I say that let x be a random variable with finite expected value, uh, then the following properties hold. Uh, so, let me enumerate the properties one by one. So, a uh, variance of x uh, and we will look at this, this definition of variance of x. Uh, this can be shown that this reduces, so the expression on the right hand side here, uh, this reduces to e of x square minus mu x square, which is uh, e of x square minus e of x whole square. Uh, the second property is that if uh, x is a constant a random variable, then the variance of this constant random variable var x, this is going to be uh, equal to 0. Uh, the third property uh, pertains to the scaling. So, for any real number a, variance of a x is simply going to be a square variance of x. The fourth property, uh, this is about the additivity. So, if 
x and y are independent random variables and this is very crucial. These are independent random variables. Then uh, the variance of x plus y, uh, this is going to be variance of x plus variance of y. And uh, finally, if c is a constant, then the variance of its scaling that is variance of x plus c uh, is simply going to be the variance of x. Uh, so, I leave the proof as an uh, exercise, just make use of the definition in order to prove them. Now, I just want to revisit something in the context of this fourth property and make an observation of how variance is uh, distinguished from expectation in terms of one property. So, uh, unlike expectation, a variance is not linear. Right? Uh, so, that means that if it was linear, it would have satisfied the property that variance of Ax plus By this is going to be equal to a of variance of x plus b of variance of y, but this is not necessarily the case uh, as we will see later on uh, for the expression for of, uh, of a linear combination of random variables. Uh, so, once you uh, will uh, we present the expression for the variance of a linear combination of uh, random variables which are not necessarily independent of each other. Uh, then you can easily see that uh, this property actually does not hold. Okay, uh, so uh, I, I just now mentioned that uh, uh, we will look at the variance of a linear combination of uh, the random variables say x1 through xn. Uh, however, before we proceed on to do that, we have to talk about one more concept that will be required in order to have an expression for the variance of the linear combination of all these random variables and that is basically the covariance. So, covariance is also as we will see later on in the discussion of the modern portfolio theory, it is of uh, great importance where uh, it will be related to essentially uh, the joint behavior of the returns of the different assets of for example, stocks that will constitute a portfolio. Uh, but we will discuss the details of that uh, as in when we start talking about modern portfolio theory. So, coming back to our current discussion, let us now move on to what is the definition of covariance. Uh, so, we will talk about uh, covariance and uh, one uh, closely related concept to covariance namely correlation. Uh, so, first let us uh, start off with the definition. So, here if x and y are random variables with finite expectations uh, denoted by, so we will denote them by mu x and uh, the expectation of y to be mu y and both of them are finite. So, we denote them by mu x and mu y respectively then the covariance of x and y is defined as, uh, so the notation for this is a sigma uh, x comma y and uh, it is also represented by C U of E for covariance x and y. And this is defined as the expectation of x minus mu x and y minus mu y. So, that is the expectation of the random variable x minus mu x and y minus mu y, where mu x and mu y are both uh, finite expectations. Uh, so, let us uh, look quickly have a look at the uh, properties of covariance. Uh, so, let x and y be random variables 
with finite expectations as before and naturally this is uh, as before we will denote them by mu x and mu y. Then the following properties hold. Uh, so, first property, uh, so first property is it will be uh, the definition of covariance of x and y and, and uh, in terms of this value of the expectation and we will give an alternative way of representing this. So, this will turn out to be equal to, so this expression that we have here, this will turn out to be E of x y minus E x into E y. The second property is that uh, the covariance of x y is the same as covariance of y x. So, that is evident from the fact that uh, covariance of x y uh, is the covariance of this product of these two random variables and covariance of y is again the product of these two random variables with the positioning of y minus mu y and x minus mu uh, x being simply exchanged. The third property, if you observe carefully, if I take my x equal to y, then this will simply become E of x minus mu x square, which is the variance of x. So, simply covariance of x uh, with itself, this is not nothing but the uh, variance of x. Uh, so, the fourth property is that uh, if x is a constant random variable, then covariance of x y is going to be equal to 0. So, this is again evident from the basic definition uh, of uh, covariance uh, in which case uh, in this case uh, one of the expectations. So, suppose that here the x is a constant random variable. So, uh, expected value of x if x is the constant value c then the expected value of x is also going to be equal to uh, c. So, one of the factors in the definition of the covariance that is x minus mu of x that is going to be equal to 0 uh, which will render the covariance to be equal to 0. Okay, so, the next come to the uh, fifth property. Uh, so, for any uh, real numbers a and uh, b covariance of a x plus b y this random variable with the random variable say z this is going to be a times covariance of x z plus b times covariance of y z. Uh, so, this will be used when you later on look at the portfolio theory and talk about the single index model. Uh, finally, one property is that uh, the absolute value of covariance of x y this is going to be less than or equal to the standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y. Moreover, uh, just one more observation. So, here this is the inequality. So, I need to uh, sort of look at wh what happens or under what circumstance the equality will take place. So, moreover, uh, the equality uh, in this above relation. So, the equality holds if and only if either 1 of x or y. So, one of the random variables is a constant or if there are constants a and b for which y is equal to a x plus b. Uh, so, in the first case if either of them are constant then uh, both the sides are going to be equal to 0 and the equality will hold uh, or the other circumstance in which the equality can hold is one of the random variables is a linear combination of the other in terms of this constants a and b. Okay, now, once we have talked about the properties of covariance, the next thing that we will look at is uh, we will introduce the definition of correlation. So, again if x and y are 
random variables with finite uh, expectation and uh, non-zero variances and we will see once the definition is placed as to why we need non-zero variances. Then the correlation coefficient of x and y is defined as rho x y is equal to covariance of x y divided by sigma x into sigma y. Uh, so, this is the, re the because we have sigma x sigma y one of the denominator that is the reason why we needed to have uh, non-zero variances. Uh, so, we note that using property uh, 6, so remember the property 6 was that the absolute value of covariance x y is less than or equal to uh, sigma x into sigma y. So, if I bring this uh, on the left hand side, from there it follows immediately in the context of rho x y it follows immediately that uh, absolute value of rho x y is less than or equal to 1 or uh, this means that rho of x1 x y lies between minus 1 and plus 1. So, this is an important property. Uh, so, next we make uh, one observation. in the context of the fact that rho x 1 lies between minus 1 and plus 1. So, uh, rho x y this assumes 1 of the boundary values of plus or minus 1 if and only if uh, there exist a constant a not equal to 0 and b. So, there are actually two constants for which y is equal to a x plus. Uh, so, from this uh, observation uh, and the definition of rho that we have here, uh, it uh, a couple of things immediately uh, follows. Immediately it follows that uh, rho x y this is equal to plus 1. This implies that the slope of this line that is a is greater than 0 and uh, for the other extreme value of rho x y that is minus 1 it follows that the slope a is less than 0. Uh, so, let us now look at the interpretation of this. So, if a rho x y is equal to plus 1, uh, so this means that y is equal to a x plus b with a positive. So, then, then, then it means so, uh, I am making this inference from the fact that uh, y is equal to a x plus b with uh, a being positive in this case of rho uh, x y equal to 1. So, then I can conclude that then y moves in the same uh, direction as x. And likewise, uh, if uh, rho x y is equal to minus 1. So, again I look at the linear relation and take into account the fact that the slope a is less than 0. So, then y moves in the opposite direction as x. Uh, so, one last interpretation remains and uh, this is again in, uh, in terms of independence. So, if x and y are independent, 
then rho x y is equal to 0. Uh, so, it is obvious from the fact that if they are independent of each other, then uh, covariance of x y uh, which is expected value of x. So, remember that we had this property uh, of covariance of x y is equal to e x y minus e, e x into e y. So, if x and y are independent then e x y is equal to e x into e y. So, covariance will become 0 and consequently naturally your rho also is going to be equal to 0. However, uh, we need to be cautious that uh, the converse is not necessarily true. Okay, now, uh, let me uh, note down a couple of uh, terminology that we will frequently use. Uh, so, the random variables so, again this is related to the values of plus minus uh, 1 and 0 of rho x y. Uh, so, the random variable x and y are uncorrelated if uh, rho x y is equal to 0 perfectly positively correlated if rho x y equal to 1 and perfectly negatively correlated if rho x y is equal to minus 1. Okay, uh, so, we conclude this discussion on covariance and correlation with one theorem uh, related to variance, uh, linear combination of, uh, of random variables. So, if x1, x2 all the way to xn are random variables on omega and uh, a1, a2 all the way to a n are uh, naturally the corresponding constants. Then the linear combination that is summation a i x i i is equal to 1 to n. The formula for this is given by double summation i is equal to 1 to n j is equal to 1 to n of a i into a j into covariance of x i x j. Okay, now, let us, uh, so we, had, uh, we have discussed uh, elaborately on the discrete space. So, let us now move on to continuous uh, probability space and talk about the uh, expectation and the variance uh, uh, in, the, in the continuous probability space. As before, we start off with expectation. and we have the definition first. So, let x be an absolutely continuous random variable uh, having the density function. So, we have to specify the density function f of x. So, then uh, the expectation or uh, expected value or mean of the random variable x is defined as the improper integral. Uh, so, as before I will use mu x to give the, as the notation for expectation of x and this is defined as the improper integral of minus infinity to plus infinity x into f of x dx. So, this is similar to summation x i into uh, p of x equal to x i. Uh, however, we need the condition provided 
that integral minus infinity to infinity absolute value of x f of x dx this is uh, and finally uh, we come to a uh, variance Uh, so, for this, so let us look at the definition. Uh, the variance of an absolutely uh, continuous random variable x is defined as uh, as was the case with the uh, finite probability space. So, this is sigma x square is equal to var x. This is expected value of x minus mu x square and uh, consequently the standard deviation is defined as sigma x is equal to s d of x is equal to uh, is defined as the square root of variance of x. Further, if x is a random variable uh, and uh, say g from r to r is a measurable function then g of x is a random variable. So, recall that we had something similar in the uh, finite space then g of x has the expectation given by and uh, the notation for this uh, would be e of g x and it is given by minus infinity to infinity integral uh, f of x dx uh, of course for g of x dx provided integral minus infinity to infinity of absolute value of g x into f x dx this is finite. So, just to wind up this, uh, we will just briefly note the properties uh, both for expectation as well as variance. So, expected value of summation a i x i, i is equal to 1 to n, uh, this is going to be summation a i e of x i. So, expectation satisfies the linearity property. Uh, secondly, if x 1, x 2 all the way to x n are independent then expected value of x1, x2 all the way to xn this is going to be product of E x i i is equal to 1 to n. Uh, the third property is uh, variance of x is E of x square minus e of x uh, whole square. Uh, the fourth property is that uh, variance of summation a i x i i is equal to 1 to n this is summation a i square uh, variance of x i i is equal to 1 to n for independent x size. Uh, and the last property is variance of x plus minus a is variance of x for some real constant a. Uh, so, this brings us to the end of uh, this lecture. Uh, this lecture, uh, just to recall, uh, was focused on essentially uh, three uh, main concepts, namely the uh, expectation, the variance and the covariance. For the expectation, we defined 
uh, it both in the finite uh, discrete space as well as a continuous space uh, and we have we did the same in case of variance and we took uh, uh, the concept of variance and then we extended in case of uh, covariance and uh, and we define what is the correlation coefficient and uh, all these concepts that is the expectation uh, variance and uh, the covariance as well as the correlation concept they all uh, basically form the fulcrum of the discussion of the modern portfolio theory. So, in the next class we will talk a little bit about uh, estimation. Uh, in the context of covariances and we will talk about some important uh, uh, distributions that are relevant in the context of this particular course. Thank you for watching.